Today's video is going to be a tribute to Sebastian Vettel, of course. As you guys know, he has now officially, at the time of recording, retired from Formula One. So I thought, why don't we do a race with every single car he has ever driven in Formula One? And let's see which one comes out on top. So let's run you through the grid in reverse performance order, to my knowledge. So 2014 Red Bull on pole followed by 2016 Ferrari. 2015 Ferrari followed by 2007 BMW Sauber. P5 2008 Toro Rosso followed by the 2009 Red Bull. Then we have P7 the 2010 Red Bull followed by the 2011 Dominant Machine. Then P9 the 2012 Red Bull followed by the also dominant 2013 Machine. And then P11 the 2017 Ferrari followed by the not so good, the not so quick 2020 Ferrari. P13 the 2021 Aston Martin with P14 having the 2019 Ferrari and then finally on the last row 2018 Ferrari followed by the current 22 machine. So yeah, let's get into it and let's get this race underway. I've chosen Japan because I was going to go Hockenheim originally but it's become very clear Seb has a massive affection for Suzuka since he announced his retirement. So I feel like it's fair that we race here. So then here we go. Eight laps of Suzuka. Sebastian's favorite circuit. Lights are on. And we're underway for this tribute race. Hopefully you enjoy. If you like and subscribe as well, it really helps out the channel. And here we go. Just taking it easy here. Just making sure we don't run into trouble versus the Assetto Corsa AI which are notoriously difficult to deal with. Also, we've got a full tank of fuel and stone cold tires, which isn't going to help in terms of us being able to be aggressive. But yeah, so far we've got past a couple of cars, P13, side by side here with the 2017 Ferrari, going through the S's. Trying to look for our way through, but just roadblocks everywhere, two wide situations. I tried to maybe get the run there, but the gap kind of closed at the last moment. And the two Ferraris, 2019 and 2020, banging tyres, exchanging rubber. Getting the run up to the hairpin now, though. We're going to try to send it on at least a couple of them. We do get the 2020 car, but not 2019. So that's P12 for us now. Let's see, down to Spoon Curve try to close up when we move the brake bar slightly forward and the 2019 car runs in a bit wide we have no grip though through the second part my god the front end just washed out massively so that's not ideal it looks like we're also massively down on straight iron speed so that's ironic and i've got a car on my left it's the 2020 ferrari farting back through we're not going to give this one up though, we're going to stick it in there, side by side into the chicane. Slight bit of rubber exchange, but we go through, back into P12. I think we're going to come under pressure here yet again, surely. No. Nope. Okay, we're in the clear, nice. So let's get after the 2019 Ferrari then, which is next. And then we've got a whole bunch of rebels stopping us from moving into the points up the inside there we just sneak by past the 2019 Ferrari we've got the 2012 Red Bull here just in front we're gonna try to sneak by but the curb didn't have the most grip so I wasn't able to commit into dead no it's getting ugly and we've got a Red Bull backwards and we take evasive action and we stay alive that's gonna help us out quite nicely so that moves us into P7. A couple of Red Bulls and a Ferrari left. to try and break into the top four. Nice exit out, Spoon. But again, we've got no straight line speed, interestingly enough. I thought we would have destroyed the V8 cars. Not the other hybrids, but you know, the V8s. I thought we would have had the edge over them as we almost completely destroy the Red Bulls in 130R and just run to the back of them. Getting past one. Now we'll get past the other, or try to get past the other if we have the straight line speed. It's a 2014 Red Bull, so this should be a bit more fair. 
cranking up the engine mode here to try and fight, but the 2014 Rebel holds its own. Damien Sardo into turns one and two, and we get the move done. There it is. Up next, Ferrari. Which one? Looks like 2015 to me. Seb's first race winning Ferrari. Of course, that famous Malaysia race. Oh my god. You can see it has no downforce compared to what we're driving as we just breeze past and get the move done before Degna. So there it is. On lap 3 all the way up to P4. And now we've got to try and race after the top 3. Not visibly in sight. I'm trying to think what cars are left. I think it's the 2007 Sauber. Uh, we've got the 2008 Toro Rosso. And I want to say... I think 2016 Ferrari? I don't think I've overtaken that car yet, so... I think those are the three outliers. So let's try and chase after them. Let's see if we can try and get them. Okay, I see him. Heading into turn one, at least one of them. I want to say that was the 2016 Ferrari. This is where we're strongest. Sector one, we just absolutely float through these S's compared to these older cars by the looks of it. Just have that downforce which really works well. Tires are nicely up to temp now as well, which really helps. You can see there it is, the 2016 Ferrari just making his way up through Dunlop, so we're gonna gain a bunch through here. We'll be onto him by the hairpin at this rate. Oh, that's brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. This RSS car is so much fun once you get the tyres up the temperature. Really good fun to drive. We're going to close in massively through here. And we can start to use the RS. Although I wouldn't consider myself technically within a second of the car ahead just yet. But here we go then. Let's see if we can try and break onto the podium. We've got a yellow flag just for a brief moment. I think that's further behind. Absolutely no sign though of the 2007 Sauber and the 2008 Toro also. Pointing the seam into the S section there up ahead, so they're completely wrong. Here we go then, closing in on the Ferrari. You can just see the difference in downfalls, and we just have it, especially now the tyres are warm, we just breeze past. Easy stuff. Of course, these cars are about four, five, six seconds up quicker now than those 2016 cars. But there we go, onto the podium. Let's see if we can try and hunt down the top two in the remaining three and a half laps of this race. Not going to be easy, but not possible. Okay, I just saw a car vanish into turn one. We can do this. It's three laps. It's going to require maximum pace and commitment, but this is possible. I can just see the car also vanishing through the S's there. It's the Toro, so I'm pretty sure that's going to be first on the list. Oh, that was nice. Very nicely done through the S's there. Car just working an absolute treat right now. Ooh, bit of a moment though. Getting a bit overconfident there, but be careful. Ay ay ay, that's not good. Just started the last lap. I'm pretty sure we're just massively down on the straights. I can see both of them now heading into turn one. I can just see them. But I don't think we've got the pace to catch. The gap hasn't really changed that much in the last few laps. And I'm making mistakes now, I'm overdriving. They are closing up though, so there might be a last lap battle between them. Let's give everything here and see if we can close it. I'm also pretty low on battery modes. Perfect through there, that was really nice. Good recovery through the S's. Risks they're taking lots of inside curb. You can just see them both disappearing up the hill. But I think our issue is straight line speed. Just don't think we've got enough. They're just driving off in the straights. Come on, Aston Martin. We need to fight. We need to push. Come on. Half a lap to go. I'm super strong for 130R. Could have done with maybe what, two more laps, I think. Looks like the BMW Sauber though is going to pick up the win. 
let me know, did you have that as a prediction? Do you think that Sauber is going to be the fastest car in this race, followed by the Toro Rosso? That's a bit of a surprise to me. Here we go then. This came for the last time. And it's going to be P3 and the podium for us. And there's your lot. Damn, that was... Whew. That's a workout and a half, that was. But let's confirm it, so... As you can see... No, it was not the Toro Rosso. It was the 2009 Red Bull finishing second to the BMW Sauber. So there it is. There's your lot for the race. There you have it then, guys. That is a tribute to Sebastian. Admittedly, the race wasn't as insane as I would have liked. I had many, many, many other attempts, but too many things happened, too much chaos happened, so I had to keep restarting to get a half decent clean race. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did, subscribe for more. And yeah, Sebastian, Danke, thank you very much. What a career, what a driver, what a champion, and more importantly, what a man. But yeah, Sebastian Vettel, will he return to F1, guys? In the comments down below, let me know what you think. I personally think maybe there's a stronger chance with Audi. We might see him in the future, but that's my prediction. That's my guess. As always, leave a comment down below. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Until then, take care and let's goodbye from me.